According to World Bank, our country has 6.1% of the population live on less than 100 pesos per day. 26% live on less than 200 pesos per day and 55.1% live on less than 300 pesos per day. The Rural Poverty Portal reports that half of the poor in the Philippines live in rural areas. The poorest of the poor are the indigenous, landless laborers, fishermen, small farmers, mountain folk, and women. Deforestation, depleted fisheries, and unproductive farmland are major problems of these people. As a result, there is a never-ending cycle of poverty that leads to parents having to give up their children in hopes they will have a better life somewhere else. There is a little doubt that poverty creates a culture for the creation of orphans. Many parents living in poverty are unable to care for their children as they cannot afford food, clothing, shelter, health care, and education. 70% of the poverty nandoon sa agricultural sector. They don't own the land. The land reform was efforts not because it was not given or indeed there was really some ceremony to do that but the problem again is that there was no support from them. In relation, the government created an agency that addressed the issue on poverty. This agency is the National Anti-Poverty Commission or NAPC. The president is the chairman of the said agency. The commission has two components, namely the basic sectors and the government sectors. This agency is under in the office of the president which assigned a supervising agency. And last 2018, the office of the president released the new executive order number 67 where the agency was put under to the supervision of the Department of Social Welfare and Development or DSWD that currently headed by Secretary Rolando Bautista. The highest level of decision making of the commission or the organization is the commission in bank where all the 14 basic sectors and the 25 government agencies departments and other offices are placed the mandate of the NAPC is to institutionalize of social reform agenda or the implementation the responsibility of NAPC is to invigorate strengthen the partnership between national government and the basic sectors The following are the heads of the government bodies as members of the basic sector. The Department of Agrarian Reform, the Department of Agriculture, Department of Labor and Employment, the Department of Budget and Management, Department of Social Welfare and Development, the Department of Health, the Department of Education, Culture and Sports, the Department of Interior and Local Government, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, the Department of Finance, the National Economic and Development Authority, People's Credit and Finance Corporation, subject to Section 17 of this Act, and Presidential Commission on Urban Poor. Presidents of the Leagues of Local Government Units, the League of Provinces, League of Cities, League of Municipalities, Liga ng Mga Barangay, representatives from each of the following basic sectors, farmers and landless rural workers, artisanal fisher folk, urban poor, indigenous cultural communities, indigenous people, workers in the formal sector and migrants, workers in informal sector, women, youth and students, persons with disabilities, victims of disasters and calamities, senior citizens, non-government organizations, children and cooperatives. Powers and Functions of NAPSI 
coordinate with different national and local government agencies and the private sector to assure full implementation of all social reform and poverty alleviation programs. Coordinate with local government units in the formulation of social reform and poverty alleviation programs for their respective areas in conformity with the National Anti-Poverty Action Agenda. Recommend policy and other measures to ensure the responsive implementation of the commitments under SRA. Ensure meaningful representation and active participation of the basic sectors. Oversee. Monitor and recommend measures to ensure the effective formulation, implementation, and evaluation of policies, programs, and resource allocation, and management of social reform and poverty alleviation programs. Advocate for the mobilization of funds by the national and local governments to finance social reform and poverty alleviation programs and capability building activities of people's organizations. Provide financial and non-financial incentives to local government units with counterpart resources for the implementation of social reform and poverty alleviation programs and submit an annual report to Congress including not limited to all aspects of its operations and programs and project implementation, financial status, and other relevant data as reflected by the basic reform indicator. Section 8. Principal Office The NAPC shall establish its principal office in Metro Manila and may establish such branches within the Philippines as may be deemed necessary by the President of the Philippines to carry out the powers and functions of the NAPC. Section 9. The NAPC Secretariat The NAPC shall be supported by a secretariat, which shall be headed by the lead convenor preferred to under Section 6 hereof. The secretariat shall provide technical and administrative support to the NAPC. It shall be formed from the unification of the secretariats of the following bodies. Number 1. Presidential Commission to Fight Poverty or PCFP. Number 2. Social Reform Council or SRC. And number 3. Presidential Council for Countryside Development or PCCD. To provide the continuity of existing social reform and poverty alleviation related programs, all accredited organizations under the three unified councils and commissions shall be automatically accredited under the NAPC until such time that additional accreditation requirements may be provided by the NAPC. Section 10. The People's Development Trust Fund the People's Development Trust Fund or PDTF is hereby established, which shall be monitored by the NAPC. The President of the Philippines shall assign to any existing government departments or agency the administration of the Trust Fund based on the expertise, organizational capability, and orientation or focus of the department or agency. The NAPC shall be limited to the function of monitoring the utilization of the PDTF, while the government departments or agencies designated by the President shall be directly administer the utilization of the earnings of the PDTF. For the purpose of monitoring the earnings of the PDTF, the NAPC shall number 1. Source funds for the establishment of and augmentation to the trust fund. Number two, recommend to the appropriate government department or agency the accreditation of organizations and institutions that shall act as resource partners in conducting institutional development and capability building activities for accredited organizations and beneficiaries of microfinance and microenterprise program. Number three, ensure the validation and monitoring activities are conducted for funded institutional development and capability building projects, programs, beneficiaries, and number four, promote research and development work on livelihood and microfinance technology and publications, communications programs that assist the poor beneficiaries. Section, Section 11, Purposes of the People's Development Trust Fund, PDTF. 
the earnings of the PDTF shall be utilized for the following purposes. Number one, consultancy and training services for the microfinance institutions and their beneficiaries on the establishment of the necessary support services, social and financial preparation of beneficiaries, preparation of plans and programs including fund sourcing and assistance, establishment of credit and savings monitoring and evaluation mechanisms. Number two, scholarships or training grants for microfinance staff and officers and selected beneficiaries. Number three, community organizing for microfinance livelihood and micro enterprise training services. Number four, livelihood micro enterprise project program feasibility studies and researches. Number five, savings mobilization and incentive programs and other similar facilities. Number six, information and communication systems such as baseline surveys, development monitoring systems, socio-economic mapping surveys, organizational assessments, and other similar activities. Number seven, legal and other management support services such as registration documentation, Contract review and enforcement, financial audit and operational assessment. Number eight, information dissemination of microfinance technology. And number nine, other activities to support microfinance as approved by the designated agency administering the PDTF. The PDTF may be accessed the following. Registered microfinance organizations engaged in providing microenterprise services for the poor to enable them to become viable and sustainable. Local government units providing microfinance and microenterprise programs to their constituents provided that the PDTF shall be used by the LGUs for personal services and maintenance and other operating expenses and local government units undertaking self-help projects where at least 25% of the total earnings of the PDTF shall be used exclusively for the provision of materials and technical services. Section 12. The Role of Local Government Units or LGUs The local government units through the local development councils of the province, city, municipality, or barangay shall be responsible for the formulation, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation of the National Anti-Poverty Action in their respective jurisdictions. The LGUs shall identify the poor in their respective areas based on indicators such as the minimum basic needs approach and the human development index their location occupation nature of employment and their primary resource base and formulate a provincial city municipality anti-poverty action agenda identify the source funding for specific social reform and poverty alleviation projects Coordinate, monitor, and evaluate the efforts of local government units with the private sector on planning and implementation of the local action program for the social reform and poverty alleviation and coordinate and submit progress reports to the National Anti-Poverty Commission regarding their local action programs. In effect of the Republic Act No. 8425 or known as Social Reform and Poverty Alleviation Act, the National Anti-Poverty Commission or NAPSI was formed. The NAPSI is the agency assigned to ensure the proper implementation of Social Reform Agenda or SRA in different agencies of the government and even to the non-government organizations. The aim of NAPSI is to affirm the local government unit or LGU to strengthen the implementation of SRA as part of their local development efforts. The NAPSI believes that if SRA is properly implemented, it is a big help to fight poverty. And that was the implementation of the Republic Act 8425, the Anti-Poverty Alleviation Act. And this is Jay Ramonito Iscabillas reporting.